Hello everyone. You might have seen the news this week about Richard Russell, the ground crew employee of a Seattle airport who hijacked a, an empty passenger plane and flew it around for, I think, a bit more than an hour before crashing it. Um, he did some air stunts in the flying upside down and doing some loops. Uh, it's a very interesting story to to read about and to watch the footage of. Uh, I also listened to the uh, the entire audio uh, log of the conversation between him and the uh, the air traffic controllers who were talking to him, trying to help him land the plane. Uh, he wasn't interested in landing the plane. He, uh, I think he knew as soon as he took the plane that he wasn't able to land it. He wasn't a professional pilot. He had no piloting training. But he certainly was not equipped to land the plane by himself. So uh, as soon as he stole the plane, that he, he knew that there was... Um, there was no, there was no landing for him. It was a, it was a suicide. I'm not going to go into all of the details here. There are some uh, interesting details. I'm just going to go into the kind of mythology of this story, which has captured the hearts of many. On the one hand, it's a very sad tale of a man with a mental illness that led him to be suicidal, and uh, possibly uh, bipolar disorder. I, I haven't actually seen that reported, but based on the audio I've heard of him in the plane he sounded rather manic to me like he was in the middle of a manic episode perhaps maybe that was just his personality I don't know but it certainly um, in order to do that you it, it's almost by definition an abnormal uh, thing to do it's uh, mentally abnormal and uh, to kill to kill oneself is usually an indicator of a mental illness but on the other hand when we compare this story to a story of so many other uh, suicidal people like school shooters who choose to kill many other people up on their way out and to cause as much damage to the world as possible. Richard Russell starts to look like a, uh, a much more sympathetic figure, certainly. He, of course, he stole the plane and was uh, acting recklessly. He didn't have any training and he could have um, crashed the plane and and caused a lot of damage to uh, not just buildings, but also he could have killed people if he had crashed the plane, and yet he didn't. He um, Maybe that's part of what makes this so amazing, is that this guy with no training at all and no experience flying a plane was able to pilot this thing successfully for more than an hour and just um, perform these amazing stunts in the air and see all the sights he's, um, of the area that he loved Rather than making his last act on Earth something of violence and hatred, or even just um, killing himself in an, an mundane way, he chose to go out in this blaze of glory, of um, you know, taking as much from life as he possibly could on his way out without hurting anyone. I, I'll emphasize again in the audio logs he says multiple times that he doesn't want to hurt anyone. He doesn't even want to inconvenience the people at the airport who are talking to him and the other pilots he um, he's he expresses regret about the trouble that he's causing for these people and he uh, he's fully cooperative with the um, the ground crew who are trying to get him to avoid the other planes and uh, trying to get him to land safely somewhere where he's not going to cause any harm uh, he he didn't want to hurt anyone and i think we can all sympathize with that feeling of impulsiveness that sometimes comes over us uh, especially if you've got a mundane job or a you know, mundane life. If you've been living it the same day every day for uh, 10 years, you sometimes are inspired by this sort of impulsiveness to one day just completely change everything and sort of p pursue your dreams, if you if you can call it that. Um, obviously not the suicide, but the, the, the flying a plane thing. Usually... Uh, flying a plane on your own is something that takes hundreds of hours of uh, very expensive training uh, and it's it's usually off limits to most people. If you want to become a pilot, you have to be quite rich and have a lot of spare time. Uh, you've got to have access to a plane. Uh, it's just not accessible and m maybe this was something he'd always dreamed of was flying a plane and he just wanted to just do it. Of course, I have no idea what was going through his mind that day when he either made the decision to do it or perhaps didn't even make the decision constantly but just did it. I don't know. 
I don't know what, um, yeah, I don't know what a state of mind was at all. Mostly what I want to talk about in this video is the conflicts that I'm having within myself between these two um, views of Richard Russell as a, um, a subject of my, my sympathy and especially, of course, his family, who he left behind, uh, deserve, of course, everybody's sympathy. Uh, victims of suicide and the ones they leave behind, are, um, it's a tragedy that this person should um, kill himself for whatever reason. He didn't get the help he needed, even when he was uh, in the sky f flying, talking to the uh, air traffic controllers, he seemed to express a little bit of... He, he did express some interest in landing when they were talking about possibilities for um, different airports he could land at. He was... He, 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 he humoured the idea just enough that made me really wonder if, he, if he'd had a loved one on the phone, if he'd had a psychologist on the phone, if perhaps they could have helped him land the plane. Of course, I'm not blaming the... Um, air traffic controllers he was talking to, it was their job to make sure he didn't crash into any other planes or just crash the plane he was in. He, they're not responsible for his mental well-being at the time. They were just trying to keep everybody else safe, uh, which is you know their jobs and that's what they are. Uh, that's what they're best at. Um, it would have taken uh, someone with either a a strong connection to um, Richard Russell or, like I say, a trained psychologist. I think if if such a thing were possible to get him to land uh, rather than crashing the plane. If I haven't already mentioned, uh, he crashed into a completely un, uninhabited area. It was, a, it was a forested island, I think. Of course, I'd rather that this man had not committed suicide and that his family could still um, enjoy his company, that he could have perhaps got better, uh, got some, some of the help that he needed perhaps improved his mental health and got over what he, whatever he was going through. But of course now he can't, there's no more opportunity to. And it's uh, simply a tragedy, of course. And yet there's this other part of me that is wants to celebrate this amazing feat, this, um, this hero figure of this guy who did what nobody's ever done before. It's hard not to feel inspired by... The footage and by the audio he's just such a, um, a kind of magnetic charismatic figure and the the footage of the stunts that he pulls off in the air against the backdrop of this beautiful sunset is just it's all inspiring and I I don't know if I am right to feel that way I know that many other people do feel the same way as I do that this is a an event to be kind of celebrated and also mourned simultaneously and I've seen people on the internet sort of having arguments about whether we should be celebrating this guy's suicide. I mean, of course, when you put it like that, it sounds like we definitely shouldn't be. But the part of the celebration of it is also a, a mourning of the um, a mourning of this amazing guy who died. But then we would never even have heard about him if he hadn't died in this particular way. And I think perhaps that awe-inspiring nature of this act is also what compelled him to uh, to do it in in this way he knew that it would be be amazing not just for himself but for others um, and he in uh when he was talking to the the ground crew on over the radio he was saying that he was expecting some kind of moment of serenity when he was on the when he was flying looking at all the views and um i suppose knowing that his death was imminent he was expecting to feel feel peaceful but it never came and perhaps that's the biggest tragedy of all is that although all of us get to feel inspired by watching um watching the footage of his flight and by listening to his words he never got to feel that whatever that is he never got to feel what he was expecting to feel from doing that although he did say that he enjoyed um the sights he enjoyed the uh, chatting to the air traffic controllers, he uh, he lamented that he wouldn't be able to spend time with them ever again. That he was that that was it for him. I just don't know. It's a complicated feeling. I think what um, what is going on in uh, in me and in a lot of other people who are finding out about this story is that they they just don't know how to feel about it. I think. I guess my question is: Is it right to paint Richard Russell as this heroic? 
but tragic character? Or should we just be seeing him as the victim of a mental illness, whether that be uh, depression, bipolar disorder, or something else, whatever it was. As always, let me know what you think. I'm really interested in this question and I, I really don't know myself how to feel about it. So I'd be very interested to see what everybody else has to say. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, please, if you're in trouble, if you're in a bad place in your life, if you feel overwhelmed or depressed or suicidal, um, please seek whatever help you need. It's, um, uh, it's, it's the right thing to do. I got a lot of people that care about me and uh, it's gonna disappoint them to, to hear that I did this. Um, I would like to apologize to each and every one of them. Um, just a broken guy, got a few screws loose, I guess. Never really knew it until now. Hey, pilot guy, can this thing do a, uh, a backflip thing? I think I'm going to try to do a barrel roll, and if that goes good, now I'm just going to nose down and call it a night.